partnership between Fiki and NADM uh, is doing a, a decent job in, in helping industries at risk, especially in these very difficult times. And uh, I also take this opportunity to to reach out to all the attendees that, and all the participants, um, you know, and, and wish them the best to them, their family and their loved ones. Uh, I know most of us, uh, this 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 uh, COVID crisis has spared no one, and uh, but then we have to be as resilient as we always have been. Uh, times are difficult, but uh, the show must go on, as they say, and we the the, the preparedness towards uh, a more safe ecosystem for operating in industries is 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 as important as anything else is because all the critical services, all the critical industries are running even amidst this, these crises. So we have to be careful for, uh, you know, when, when it comes to the, uh, the operations of these industries, because they, they hold the, they are the spine and the backbone of our economy, especially the oil, gas and petroleum sector. So on that note, uh, I also thank my colleagues, uh, Akhil Gupta and Manak Majundar and Varun Sharma for putting this all together, we, you know, we all have personally, like Derry Saab mentioned, despite his, um, you know, family being affected by by COVID, uh, he still is here uh, amongst us, you know, to, to present um, uh, on this very important subject. And I I, I salute you for your spirit, uh, Derry Saab. Thank you so much thank for, thank you. for taking out time and uh, you know and, and and sending that strong message that the business as usual. Uh, it may get affected, but the show must go on. Thank you so much. So we are almost, uh, we have touched the 200 mark now. So I think it's a good time to now kick off uh, 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 today's proceedings with this very important presentation, a very uh, uh, um, a pertinent presentation, which would be made by uh, uh, Mr. Joydee Plary. For people who, who would join us late, uh, I think we will keep them informed that they can also um, you know, we will be sharing these presentation and the videos are all on YouTube. So they can uh, visit those uh, links and uh, see those uh, uh, bits of the presentation which they have missed. So on that note, uh, thank you again, Larry Saab, and over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, so my all best wishes to the, those all who have present. And uh, this is a, a good initiative by NIDM and Piki. Really, it is a need of the hour, especially the, after the Bagjan incident of the oil and gas blowout. It has shown to the country that they require the attention. And uh, Honorable Prime Minister also wanted that oil gas sector has to be uh, in NIDM and Piki together or NDRF. They should take some course so that uh, oil gas system, the disasters, if it happens, it gets up. Uh, it is being the disaster control being upgraded. So you all who are uh, who have joined, it is uh, all you are keeping good health, uh, and I wish, I pray, and I request all of you take care, take care of you, take care of your family, take care of your society and the country at large. It is a very tough time, but this tough time will go. Don't worry. So just be uh, follow the instruction that mask and the hand wash and distance. So next slide, please. Sir, uh, Larry, if you allow, uh, I would request Bainak, my colleague Bainak Majumdar. To please read out your introduction because I think although you need no introduction, no, 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 not required, not required. Forget it. Just, just for ten seconds, you know, let him just read it out, sir. Please, thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Yeah, uh, uh, um, let me uh, uh, read out uh, uh, Mr. Joydeep Lahiri's, you know, uh, present, uh, you know, uh, his biodata. Mr. Uh, Sri Joydeep Lahiri is the chief uh, general manager of Oil India with thirty six. And he has worked in various spheres of oil joining to corporate office and as engineer in charge constructed oil's first 660 kilometer product pipeline from the Maliga refinery in Assam to Rangapanji terminal in RN at off NRL at Siliguri, West Bengal. He is presently attached with uh, DGH as chief general manager environment for a short time assigned for resolving the pending clearance issues for the oil and gas upstream sector. He is very much dedicated for resolving the issues pertaining to oil and gas upstream sector under prevailing various environment and safety regulations. He was also nominated member for oil in designing the ORST's first cathode standard for pipelines. Uh, uh, over to you, sir, for your uh, you know yeah. for your presentation. Well, thank you for nice nice briefing. Next slide, please. 
So this is the just to tell that in a bot cell before we go to the oil and gas sector. So this is the countries, the various industrial sector. The country is having oil, gas, metal mining, cement, textile, chemical, steel, ports, power, railways, infrastructure, road, real estate, agriculture, and allied industries, automobile, auto component, aviation, defense. And in 2020, around 500 million workers were employed in this. These industries of India, uh, and that it is the second largest employment after the China. Next slide, please. So the, these industries, what happened? Uh, maximum, the most dangerous occurrence happens into the sector is like transport, oil and gas, petrochemical, then chemical industry, mining, railways, construction. Experience the most workplace death. Then the government schemes where the injuries for the uh, absenteeism and agriculture, forestry, fishery, and hunting experience the highest death per date of one lakh workers. Next slide, please. So, globally, 2.78 million workers die each year, and uh, out of which uh, 2.4 million are disease related to the occupational work, and 374 million was, was non fatal. And uh, this is almost the 4% of the world GDP. And some countries, this is about 8% or more. Since May 2020, there have been 30 industrial accidents in India, killing at least 75 workers, according to industry all, global union workers. From 2014 to 17, we have 8,004 8, such incidents in Indian workplace. And maximum was in Delhi, Maharashtra, and Rajasthan. Next slide. In the transport sector, India roughly accounts just 1% of the global vehicle. However, the, we are the 6% of the global uh, global road accident. In 2018, there were around 1,51,000 deaths due to road. So India accounts 11% of the global death in the road accidents, highest in the world. And roughly around 17 road accidents related deaths occur across the India every hour. Next slide, please. This is the statistics. You can just have it. It is just I have downloaded. So from the from the presentation, you can see it. Next slide. The, the major the accidents and disaster. This I am uh, before we go to the topics. We are going to taking you through some of the major accidents happened in India in various segments of the industries. Next slide. This is, you all know, that uh, the Union Carbide that happened in 1984. There it was, the death was 3,787 deaths. And 27 December 1975, we had the Chasnala mine disaster, and it killed 372 miners. 23rd September 2009, we had the Cobra Chuni, uh, Chuni, Chuni collapse. And uh, there we had uh, death of 45 deaths. Next slide. And uh, Jaipur fire, it happened in October 2009, which killed, uh, killed 25 people. It was the ICL terminal. And there was an incident in April 20 in Mayapur uh, in the step, the step purchase. They purchased uh, from, the, uh, from the Delhi University uh, an ACL, ACL gamma cell, a research, research irritator, and that was cut to the pieces, and that was a hazardous item. Later, it was sold to them in in in, in February, and later on, government of India uh, took custody of those materials. 14 April 1944, we have the explosion at Bombay Dock, and which killed around 800 people. Next slide. In 23 December 2020, we had Ipco power plant gas leak at Pulpur in UP, two dead. In uh, 3rd February 2021. We had we had a boiler blast at chemical factory of of SOV uh, Russian private. There was eight dead. Seventh May 2020, we had gas leak at LG polymer at Visakhapatnam. There were uh, there were eleven deaths. Next slide. Eight December 2019, fire at the factory building in 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 Anaj Mundi in Delhi. Forty three people were dead. First November 2017. Boiler explosion at NTPC power plant rivalry, which killed 40 people. Next slide. This is the 5th September. It is the fire, fire in Shibakashi. Uh, uh, 
फिर फायर फायर क्रैकर फैक्ट्री फिफ्टी सिक्स की फुल डेट ट्वेंटी सेकेंड मे नाइनटीन सिक्सटी फाइव धनबाद कोल माइन एक्सप्लोशन हुई किल टू सिक्सटी एट माइनर्स थर्टी एट डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड एट्टीन इट वॉज मेघाला माइनिंग एंड एंड देर माइनर्स वेर वे ट्रैप ट्रैप देर फॉर डेज टूगेदर नेक्स्ट लाइफ This is like at this one, 1954, the new Chilki Koreli Koreli disaster, and it uh, the, the there was a death of uh, 63 persons. In 1994, 24 August 28, the Rajpura the Darbara mine mine disaster, which killed 13 miners. Next slide. Now the, we go to the train accidents. How how much it have uh, the few of the major one. Next, six June nineteen eighty one passenger train carrying say eight hundred passenger. There was there was death uh, death around five hundred to eight eight hundred. Twenty August nineteen ninety five the Pujabas rail uh, rail disaster. It killed it killed people. Second August nineteen ninety nine your Gaisal in North Bengal. It killed it killed twenty six two sixty eight people. Next slide. Twenty-six number, nineteen ninety-eight. The Jambutai and Chelda Express. Uh, it was class and it killed two hundred twelve people. Twenty-eight May two thousand twenty-ten. Uh, it was the, it was Ganeshwari Express. Uh, it got derailment and it killed uh, killed one seventy people. Twenty-three seven twenty December nineteen sixty-four. It was in South India. It killed 150 passengers. The the train uh, got the cyclone washed away the train into the sea. Next slide. Nine September September 2002. Your Howrah Nidhi Rajdhani incident. It uh, it was death. Uh, there were more than 140 deaths. Deaths. And uh, 20 September 1954. It was uh, there was death of 139 people. Second September 1956, death of 125 people. Next slide. So th these are the nuclear nuclear uh, the accidents in nuclear power plants: 87, 89, 92, 93, 95, and 2002. Uh, these are most uh, mostly uh, very sensitive and hazard. This type of accidents in the nuclear plant. Next slide. Accidentally, now coming to the oil gas sector. Next, oil gas fire. You have to. Uh, you all are aware that is a very difficult to extinguish because there is a continuous flow of fuel, and oil and gas fires can be uh, can uh, fires can be because of the human action, accident, or natural event such as lightning. In case of huge scale of fire, jets of flames from uh, ignited high pressure oil vessel others moves forward in a faster space, and it uh, it encompasses the surrounding area. And the frequent cause of uh, a well fire is a high pressure blow out uh, during drilling operations. Next slide. Blow out of fire in well either during drilling or while producing. Here we are not well equipped in the country and need the help of the experts from the blow. Next slide. This is the oil gas power, uh, oil gas fire that a major uh, thing is the uh, most uh, harmful one is, is the vapor cloud explosion. When the gas gets accumulated and moment it gets a source of heat, it it explodes like a bomb and it uh, around around 30 kilometer area it it uh, completely makes fires and destroys. Next slide. So this is the, the how the vapor cloud explosion forms. It is a theory you can see from the slide later on. Next slide. This is I will tell that the three the blowouts of the India. Where the Indian experts, Indian could not do it of its own, and we had to hire the expert from the abroad. The 27 May 2020, while Bagjan well number five, it is a recent incident happened, and it uh, the uh, the blowout occurred in May 27, 2020, and it uh, the well got fired in June 9, and the whole episode was was nullified only after 158 days. By bringing uh, two teams from two different sources, one from Singapore, one from UK, then it got got controlled there. 
and uh, there was the another fire in this incident was in oil india then oil india had another fire in 2005 in september so that was a well and it was happened in 59 but that lasted for 20 days but that, that did not affect much uh, they came to the light of the national level similarly one fire took place in 1995 in ongc uh, in amlapuram it lasted for 65 days and uh, their rig uh, got totally uh, burned and it was a loss of around 9.2 crores and other equipment loss was 7 crores so these three are the major fires of the oil blowout related where we have to bring the experts from abroad in all the three cases next slide so these are the when we call the foreign experts in the in the blowout uh, blowout in the well uh, that is the they use various techniques use of dynamites devil cigarette lighter technology FA wagon, raising of fume, drilling of relief wells, nuclear explosion, mechanical jaws, and dowsing. Next slide. So this is the when a blowout occurs in a well, uh, non availability of critical equipment and resources for tackling the scenario and lack of expertise is the country to tackle well blowout is the one drawback. Well, then the crucial time loss in planning, you have for where from you will bring the people whether Singapore or UK or whom, then the, all the procedural things is there. And in case of Bagjan incident, there was a, a bit delay. Another additional delay was because of the ongoing COVID lockdown in the March. It happened in May. So, uh, so March onwards it started. So they are bringing the queue because all the, all the air traffic was closed. So there it took some more time. And improper communication also, it harms a lot so during such stage and from confusion due to flow of information, uh, confusion, and incompetent spokesperson for propagating the negative message in the print and electronic media. Next slide. These are the equipment I'm showing that when you call the experts, they bring these equipments uh, with them from abroad. These are all airlifted and brought. This is the particular one was used, uh, used in Kuwait and where there was nine fire for 43 days in 1991. Next slide. We have the equipments just to show that how, what kind of equipment required, which we do not have in our country. Next slide. These are for the for the offshore cases. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. See, see, from here also they are they are they, they, they are practicing in abroad. Uh, by staying home. Next slide. So these are the experts normally whom we have to call when there is a there is a well blog. These are internationally known, uh, very renowned experts, goods and tools and this. These are the groups which are well known internationally. Next slide. This is the other oil gas fire. This is the, the fire what I am showing here. It is the Gale, Gale pipeline fire. It happened in Andhra Pradesh in June 2014, there it happened, the vapor cloud explosion. The gas leaked from a source, it traveled uh, around 5-10 kilometers, then it started accumulating uh, nearby to some village, and uh, then some villagers might have in the early morning uh, used some matchstick, and uh, suddenly there was an explosion because of the, the vapor cloud explosion, and the incident killed, killed, uh, killed 12 people. Next slide. This is another, another big fire was there in the ONGC Mumbai High in 2005, which killed 11 people and 11 were missing. So you can tell uh, total 22 people were missing. Next slide. This is the fire at ONGC Uran plant in Mumbai due to gas leakage. Next slide. This is a, a gas broaching. Gas broaching, it is happening in, uh, in Oil India's case because Oil India is having the oldest well and those wells which are having a casings, say some wells which are 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. So those, those casings get eroded. And then the from the down below, say from 2000 meter below and all the gas, uh, when, when it is a gas well, the, through the uh, casing holes, the ga gas uh, enters the soil and it penetrates to a far apart distance. And sometimes you'll find that somebody's house, the gas is coming out 
you know, gas is coming out from the from the tube well in the house floor like that. So this gas dose incident was was once first experienced by Oil India in 2011 in Upper Assam. That well is called 285. Next slide. This is another gas dosing incident Oil India encountered in, in Rajasthan Jaisalmer. It was happened in September 2015, and this was the the casing got eroded uh, because of the high high carbon dioxide content in that gas. Next slide. This is the incident of one LPG tanker explosion in Kannur, Kerala, and it killed 20 people. Next slide. This is the 100, uh, 100 cylinder exploded in Patna, and it took uh, around, around 10, 15 people it, uh, got, uh, were, were dead in this incident. Next slide. These are the uh, some other the other natural calamities also do happen as a as a kind of disaster in the oil gas sector. This is the a pipeline of Oil India. It was laid in by 1962. In 1968, uh, in Tista River, the uh, the river came up up to the pipeline and it uh, shared the pipeline. And uh, there was a total oil pumping shutdown because this crude oil uh, crude oil pipeline is feed, was feeding oil crude oil. From Assam field to Barney refinery. So, 24 days there were no oil supply. And in the same pipeline, there was a pipeline of IOC also from Guwahati to Siliguri. That also got breached and there, that also had no supply for 27 days. Next next slide. This is also a, another, another washout of the pipeline in Chile in 1969. Same pipeline of Oil India. Next. This is the a, a pump station. Well, India pipeline has got ten pump station. This is pump station number nine. It is in Bihar. They are from Assam to Assam, Bengal, and Bihar. They have got total ten pump stations. So the pump station totally got flooded in 1972. The total uh, the, the pumping operation had to be uh, had to be stopped. Next. This is another flood came same pump station in 1987. Similar location. You see that it all the all the generators and all got submerged in the water. Uh, the river nearby is called Barhandi and the Barhandi water, uh, water came into the station. Next slide. These are the, these are the man-made thing also do happen in the accident and disaster it caused. This is the one, one blast in the sun suspension crossing in 2005. This was done by, by the terrorist group and the whole pipeline got crashed. Uh, next, next slide. This is another blast in Chalkwa. It is also man-made bomb blast in 1996. It is both Oil India's pipeline, IOC pipeline got smeared. Next slide. This is also another blast incident Oil India pipeline in uh, 1997. Next slide. So then are the, these are the other blasts also happen uh, into the blast and floods in the Oil India's pipeline. Next slide. So from these incidents, accident incidents or natural or man-made or the uh, whatever the train accident or nuclear accident or the uh, oil gas accidents, it is evident that we have to adopt all safety measures in all industrial fronts to avoid the accidents and the loss of uh, human life and property. Next slide. Now to take, define what accident. Accident means is an unplanned, uncontrolled event which causes or is likely to cause ill health or injury damaged property, planned products, or the environment, production loss, or in, uh, increased liabilities. Next slide. This slide, you, this slide you just see a bit minutely, the cause of accident, there may be a technical cause, there may be a human, human cause. Technical cause may be unsafe condition, it may be mechanical factor or environment factor, which are there, like the too high or too low temperature work is going on, too high humidity, poor illumination, inadequate rest between the working hours, then poor housekeeping, then high noise, etc. Unsafe acts may be from the human human cause, age, health, lack of knowledge and skill, improper attitude towards work, emotionally emotional instability such as such as jealousy, mental worries, non-use of PPEs, hurried job completion plan, improper use of tools 
and non adherence to sops so these are the basic only one and only the basic cause of all accidents what are happening the apart from the the register happening due to the, due to the nature type of accident we define according to the length of recovery or according to the according to the nature of injury if the accident if the if the uh, one may be the first day, the after having the incident the the employee gets the first aid and resumes duty a last time accident is that where you lose the uh, lose the person from the duty from the shift or the day and another is the home case accident according to the nature of injury it may be fatal loss of life it may be temporary temporary disablement it may be permanent disablement category is uh, done uh, categorized as minor accident when within 14 48 hours if the employee returns to the job and a reportable accidents if it is more than 48 hours you have to report to your senior fatal accidents accident due to uh, due to dangerous occurrence busting of vessels pipes etc etc next slide the probable causes of accidents will be fall either you fall from in the same level or to some lower level or you come contact with some chemicals or electricity or heat or cold or radiation rub or arbitrary friction pressure vibration caught either you are caught in caught on or caught between struck against against stationary or moving object or a protruding object sharp or jet edge or by struck by moving or flying object or falling object bodily reaction from voluntary motion involuntary motion rub or arbitrary by friction pressure and vibration these are the probable cause which will lead to accident next so occupation health safety and man protections are governed under various prevailing acts and regulations next see india this is to so india has got a the compliance regime of india is very large you see uh, in the ehs uh, you have got 107 acts 2922 compliance 231 filings like that you have finance general commercial secretarial industrial industry specific and labor these are the i have given number of acts compliance and number of filings required now we i will show you next slide that how much is the compliances there in the each country central you see in central we have got total 1536 acts and 577 compliances and 859 returns like that in the state also we are having so here we have given from the powerpoint you can see which state is having how much but these are the complications so any business you do you have to comply all this next so india does not have a singular regulation or regulatory authority to administrate sectorial industries there are multiple regulation authorities in india next slide so these are the various the safety is, is being governed by these acts factories act there are 13 acts mines act dock workers act building and other construction workers act plantation labor act contractual labor act interstate migrant <coughs> migrant workmen act working journalist and other newspaper employee act working journalist fixation of wages act motor transport workers act cell phone zone act so india has recently uh, launched uh, this occupational safety health and working working condition code 2020 published to gazette on 29 september 2020 but till date uh, all these acts are still under, uh, under implementation and uh, all these uh, uh, industries which are governed coming under these acts are has to follow these acts next slide so important regulations related to the uh, related to issues of for informations that uh, just to tell you that out of those acts that oil mines regulations amended in 2017 august then ship duty which was earlier not permitted for the women in the mines is now allowed by gazette notification 2019 then the ground water extraction for your industrial activities uh, yeah, the government of india has uh, notified a gazette on 24 9 2020 you have to be guided by that for drawing the underground water for your industrial purpose then the industry environment and norms it is being followed by ei notification 
there is an amendment uh, to it which has been proposed from 23 March 2020. However, till date, uh, this notification has not been finalized. And whoever is having the biomedical waste treatment facilities, you must, uh, you maybe, uh, you should know that you require environment clearance also for this biomedical waste treatment plan. Next slide. So globally, oil and activities, uh, oil and gas activities are considered as a standalone entity with a dedicated Ministry of Energy supported by a Director of Bureau of Oil and Gas to set policies and standards, which India does not have. Next slide. Here I am showing you in India, the oil gas sector is monitored by DGMS, Chief Inspector Factory, PESO, PNGRB, YSD. So India's, India's regulatory framework is, fragment, uh, is fragmented. And singular, uh, singular authority will find UK, Norway, China, Malaysia, Brazil. And like India, fragmented uh, thing is, have, uh, is there in USA, Western Australia, Indonesia, and Canada. And what are those statutory bodies? It is given in the central column. Next slide. So these are the oil and gas are now uh, practically is being administrated by these other acts, what I'm showing. The under Ministry of Labor Employment, it will be Oil Mines Act, Oil Mines Regulations in uh, 2017, administrated by Director General of Mine Safety. Then again, Ministry of Labor Employment, the Factories Act 1948. This is required for non-mining installation and pipelines. Then Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Department of Industry and Policy Promotion for the Explosive Act, with, for getting the peso license from the Chief Controller of Explosives. Then under MOPNG, it is governed under the Petroleum Methane Gas Regulatory Board Act 2006, PNGRB Code and Practice, uh, Practice 2010, PNGRB Standard 2016, under MOPNG, then again, we have got Oil Field Regulation Act 1948, Petroleum Nation Gas Rule 1959, Petroleum Act 1934, Petroleum Rule 2002. And under MOPNG, we have got another quasi body, OSD. They are the technical wing of MOPNG. So these are the all uh, 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 administrative mechanisms of for oil and gas sector. Next slide. The prevailing sector, these are the regulations what I already told. Those are the regulations I have mentioned here. Next slide. Next slide. This, uh, out of these regulations, what the oil gas is following, here just to bring to a notice that some of these, uh, these regulations are pretty old, which are need to be actually modified. You can see Explosive Act is 1884. Petroleum Act is 1934, Oil Field Regulation Act is 1948, Oil Field Act is 1938, uh, 48, Factories Act 1948, Infamable System Act 1952, Mines Act 1952, Mines Tool 1955, PNG Rule 1959, and Mine Vocational Training Rule 1966. So these are the quite petty rules, old rules. Next slide. Suggestion for oil gas sector. It is requires a singular, uh, a singular regular, singular regulation regulatory authority. There should be one one call emergency center, whether it is for upstream, downstream pipeline, so that a centralized number is available to all. Any emergency, that center can uh, have a pool of uh, pool of resources, and they they can divert it at, as per need. There is a need of strict enforcement of PMP Act 1962 under this Act. Uh, any pilferage attempt in the pipeline is uh, considered as a as a non bailable offence, uh, which is a common phenomena in a petroleum product pipeline to the to pilferage and enforcement. These are the common phenomena. For safety of life and property, government of India should uh, take that uh, no habitant should be allowed from 10 meters of each pipeline uh, petroleum pipeline and 50 meters from petroleum installation. This has been adopted in the state of Rajasthan. And by adopting their, uh, by uh, by amending their their land uh, uh, under provision of the land revenue conversion of agricultural land non agricultural purpose, and they have amended it uh, rule 2008. And the Ministry of Home Affairs also to notify all oil gas installations as a as a as a prohibited area under Official Secret Act 1923. These are the suggestions for required for the oil gas sector. Next slide. 
now the compliance rules regulations and guidelines next slide so regulatory bodies for oil and gas sector we have earlier i told mopng we have we have got dgms director general mine safety chief inspector of factories ysd pngrb peso apart from that in the country which is pvli inspector of uh, inspector uh, inspectorate of dock of uh, dock safety they are located in mumbai uh, jain port kandla uh, momugao kolkata paradip pisakapatnam chennai kochi new mangalore tutikuran and in mode and director general of factory factory advice services and labor institute which is called which is called dg postly dg postly is an arm of uh, arm of Ministry of Labour and Employment, and they are the uh, occupational safety and health in factories and docks. They are the policy makers and rule makers, and which has to be followed. And apart from this, uh, country does not have any other. Uh, this, they are basically only for factory and dock. But uh, DG firstly, whatever is they formulate OHS rules regulations in the country only is uh, as on date available. Of course, the occupational health safety code 2020 whatever has come. If they through that, if something comes new later on, that is different part. Then we have got a, a national safety council under Ministry of Labour, and they are only a voluntary movement. They do uh, they do encourage on uh, safety, health, and environment related issues with the various trainings and leaflets, etc. Then we have got the National Education Board of Education and Training, is a constitutional board of Quality Council of India. It offer it offers accreditation program for quality school governance in country with a view to provide framework for the effective management and delivery to the holistic education program to the all participants. Next slide. So we have got to uh, tackle to disaster. We have got uh, we have got National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA. It is being uh, formed under the uh, Disaster Management Act, Act 2005, where Honorable Prime Minister is the chairperson. And under this, under the NDMA, we have got NDRF, the National Disaster Response Force. They have got 12 battalion, battalions located across, across the country. And these are being uh, constituted uh, to paramilitary forces. Battalion one is in Guwahati, Assam. It is manned by BSF. Battalion two in Kolkata, West Bengal, manned by BSF. Battalion three in Kato, Orissa, manned by CISF. Bat uh, battalion four, in Arakkum, Tamil, Arakkunam, Tamil Nadu, manned by CSF, Battalion 5, Pune, Maharashtra. So why I am telling, in case of any disaster and uh, NDRF, uh, if you have a good linkage with NDRF, nowadays, uh, like uh, FIKI and NDM is doing this type of courses, uh, NDRF has started these courses long back. And for oil gas sector, if you talk with them and if you, through their battalions, uh, to the respective zone or area. You can avail the facilities and a lot of uh, training you can do to, uh, to your people. This is a good source available, which is uh, normally being not utilized by the oil gas sector. They have got a very uh, structured uh, uh, structured mechanisms to train. Uh, so you can contact the head office in RK Puram. So like that we have got in Gaziabad, Patna, Bihar, Bijawara, Varanasi and Itanagar in Onachal. Next slide. Now it's just to uh, appraise you that uh, when you do the safety, you have to also take care of environment because uh, it is going also side by side. So I'll just tell what are the environment regulations applicable to oil gas. Next slide. So these are the acts applicable. Forest Act, Wildlife Protection Act, Water Protection Act. These are the all acts. You can read it later on. Next slide. These are the all applicable acts for the oil gas sector you have to follow and under that uh, to, uh, to conserve uh, preserve the energy uh, environment. Next slide. This is also this. There are total 35 these uh, act regulations or the GSR you have to follow. Next slide. Then the, this is the common to all industries, uh, oil gas or others. So you have to submit these are the returns. Uh, when you do uh, for the environment angle, hazardous waste return, you have to submit annually and right side I have given under which rule. Environmental statement, a company has to give annually. 
and uh, biomedical waste treatment you have to give annually. E-waste treatment you have to give annually. Uh, consent to operate compliance you have to give six monthly. Battery return you have to give six monthly. Your environment clearance compliance you have to give submit six monthly. A TSDF return quarterly and environment environment monitoring report you have to submit monthly. These are the mandatory for all uh, for the all cross section of industries. Next slide. These are the these are the data uh, you have to you have to monitor in your installations when you do say SRM like uh, like waste type quantities environment monitoring reports then green build development these are the all data one has to monitor in their uh, segment uh, of industry where you are operating. Next slide. So now here we will just give you some tips uh, which may be helpful to you. Uh, this is that uh, uh, you have to take action. Next slide. So Dublin based research and market picks that the global petrochemical market size to reach US dollar 958.8 billion by 2025, surging at a compound annual growth rate of 8.5%. And over 450,000 workers were employed in the oil gas extraction and support industries in 2011. I have data up to that much. Next. next. Any workplace fatality is tragic, but uh, the preventable ones are doubly. Sorry, please go back. Please go back. Uh, but but uh, no, next, next. Yeah, so that any any uh, fatality, if it, it, it could have been preventable, and it is, if we could not, that hurts us more. So you will probably, you will, you will be probably never be able to shield yourself entirely from the hazard and potential injury when you oversee a petrochemical operation, but with a little bit of attention and with a serious focus on safety in your culture, you can keep your and your workers peace of mind fully in jail. From 2013 to 17, 17, we had so far 499, de 499 deaths due to oil gas operations in India. Those were related to vehicle accidents, struck by or caught in or caught between, then explosion in fire, explos explosions and fires, falls, confined spaces, chemical exposures. Next slide. Particularly, the chemical industry have numerous environmental health and safety hazards, out of which you are highlighting is process hazards. It includes leaks, spills, equipment malfunction, over temperature, over pressure, corrosion, metal fatigue, and other such conditions. Oxygen deficient atmosphere, release and accumulation of nitrogen gas in work areas may create asphyxic condition for a worker to perform a desired task. Chemical hazards, the routine plant operation discharge chemicals like hydrochloric acid, carbon monoxide, methanol, which exposes water to inhalation hazards. <coughs> and it, it also, also causes dermal hazards, includes contacts with steam, acids, and hot surface. Fire and explosions, the process operation includes accident ignitions of gases in the release section, which led to a jet fire and pool fire. Noise because of the large 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 rotating equipment next slide key strategies for mitigation may be prior to commission prior to commissioning facility wide risk analysis must be done like hazard identification study like quantitative risk assessment study following standard hazard material procurement which includes shutting down all electrical activities during flammable spill using sound leak safety equipment and other resources and Evacuation management, procedure for the management of change in operations, hot work permit, and safe system work, work. installing fire blast, fire oblique blast, uh, blast partition wall in areas that may be potentially affected by accidental release of flammable liquids, awareness of special emergency treatments for personnel contaminated with chemicals, providing early warning systems such as the pressure monitoring of gas and liquid convenient system in addition to smoke and heat detectors, examining the mechanical integrity of the process equipment and utilities at regular intervals, 
simple safety training such as identifying unsafe work procedures or conditions and wearing pp while handling petrochemicals so these are the strategies once you could take uh, holistically it can give you a good result in the long run next slide other tips when you operate and wear the right clothes your dress also has to be a proper when you go to duty use the right tool use the lifting device uh, and and no and learn how to lift don't be a prankster don't play while working or uh, making joke or fun during your work in the running equipment be tidy who have thinking reduces hazards whether it is accident with the defective equipment with the unsafe condition you must really report your superior if this channel is maintained you can avoid lot of accidents and hazards get first aid immediately as per the incident and back your safety program what about the safety uh, safety idea plan or uh, uh, thing you wish you to do you can do you can you can you should always speak next slide avoid shortcut and never take a take a chance develop safety and healthy program health program for your industry accident prevention program personal protective equipment hazardous chemical communication program respiratory protection program hearing loss prevention program fall protection work plan next identification of hazardous cases hazardous gases chemicals or material used on the job instruction of safe this may be explosive type oxidizing flammable toxic harmful corrosive and irritant enforce safety and health training program with records in forms initial periodical examination and uh, and uh, refresher examinations to uh, maintain the forms mine vocational training first aid certificate basic safety training for the construction workers bridging document between employee and contractors these are the tools next risk hazard identifications proper management changes use of eye protector for required cases use of proper pp work permit for job hot jobs display of sops and other notifications adequate precautionary measure well being welding adequate precautionary measure while undertaking excavation works because there may be a underground utilities construction uh, site with five and more workers must have a first aid box site with 30 to 99 workers must have a uh, worker with a first aid certified certificate first aid certificate certificate holder and more than 100 workers you must have a safety officer at a site next slide works at a height these are the things you can do it i think time is going on i you can skip you can read it next slide to prevent fires you can follow you can see this i i will read only you can read also from the powerpoint next slide electrical safety also and working in confined space space also i just read the confined space means any chamber tank vat pit well sewer tunnel pipe flue boiler pressure receiver pressure receiver hatch Tyson uh, shaft or silo where such things arises. The associated risks are there in the confined confined places. Fire or explosion may take place. Increase of your body temperature, lack of oxygen, increase in the level of liquid, and inter uh, inter uh, entrapment by free flowing solid. Job has to be carried out in such areas by uh, workers after necessary risk assessment and uh, checking the gas. Next slide. Special care during you have to take during the heavy equipment. Next slide. These are just uh, my suggestions. Uh, one must uh, always target. You try to get your uh, installation and uh, your employees certified. Which is on 18001 certifications. Uh, this is for occupational health safety. Then ISO 29. This certification is for your uh, your uh, for leading services outside formal education. ISO 9001 is for lead auditor training. ISO 14001 is for environment. Next, next. You also try to get your uh, uh, your personnel get certified from NEVOS, and they offers the course like uh, NEVOS IGC, NEVOS International Diploma, NEVOS PSM, NEVOS H HSW, and NEVOS courses are always uh, 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 
entertained by institution of occupational safety and health institute of environmental management and assessment next this is also a certification by osa and it is an official certificate and occupational safety is a regulatory uh, compliance body of health and safety in united states and they also this certification also has got a value next this is also uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of NDT test certificates uh, that the non destructive test certificates these are the bottom ones of the courses those also you can do from SA asnt next then the, for the pipeliners you can plan also for catholic protection that uh, catholic protection professionals these are the course cp1 2 cp2 cp3 this is good to have a personal up with these qualifications next these are also one must know the country is leading to the, the sustainable 17 goals. These are the various goals, no poverty, no hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, cleaner, clean water and sanitation, agricultural land and clean energy, defense work and, and economic growth, industry innovations and infrastructure, then reduce uh, reduce inequalities like this yeah, these are the goals the government of india is now leading towards next this is also one uh, guideline where uh, there's a disaster survival guidebook titled be smart be prepared released by government of india in 2019 one can refer it is available in ndma website next uh, next slide see any accident any disaster happen this is the ultimate thing you when you come back home you see this kind of this kind of scenario in home. Next slide. So my suggestion to all that uh, you spread this message, this particular uh, last slide before start of the day's work. Every employee should ask himself or herself, "Have I been adequately trained for this work, or am I with adequately trained, trained uh, adequately trained uh, supervisor to supervise the job?" Does a safe operating procedure exist for this work? Do I have a required knowledge about the workplace? Are suitable tools and equipment provided and are they in good condition? Do I have necessary PPEs? Do I have required authorization, permit, permission for the work? Can whether working condition, work environment or poor lighting affect the job, job safety? Are there any danger created by my activities or am I in danger due to others activities? Are work environment hazardous to health? In the event of emergency, do I know the emergency action plan? So these are the things which one really take care. I think uh, you will come out of all things. So this much only was my uh, slide. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Larry Sir, for your very detailed, very informative uh, presentation. In fact, while uh, you were making the presentations and midway your, uh, you know, uh, your, your your talk, uh, we started getting feedback from our uh, uh, from our attendees and our participants from all across the country. Uh, they, you know, they, we have uh, participants from 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 uh, uh, from as far as Jammu and Kashmir, Chandigarh, to people from Assam. Uh, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, even you know, entire South India, Kerala, uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and all these. Most of these um, feedback which we are getting, uh, you know, some of them are, are on my private uh, uh, chat as well. That uh, you know, uh, the 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 practical examples which you've given, you know, the list of uh, you know the incidents, and uh, you know, some of the those information are not even available. Let me tell you, especially about the Assam gas leak of uh, which happened last year. A lot of that information, I think, whatever I've heard, I've heard from you, you know, through your presentation. And thank you so much for sharing your experience. And and you know, because to improve industrial uh, any line in, in in any vertical or any sector, you know, especially in the area of industrial safety, and if we need to make any improvements, we need to know where we went wrong. You know, the the case studies are very important to for for uh, for better learning and. Uh, uh, you know that that's what we call as practical experience because what what goes wrong on ground can help you learn you know in a way that 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 problem does not only repeat 
not only in your organization but in, in the entire sector so experience sharing is very important and i think i must compliment uh, oil india for doing that uh, and and you spearheading that uh, uh, you know uh, that sentiment that you know the experience should be shared and that i i think that is the reason why uh, uh, the director general of hydrocarbons they they chose you to be a part of their uh, investigation what they conducted and the research which they conduct, conducted across the industry and uh, i think that's a uh, big compliment to oil india uh, from from uh, the dg uh, h as well so thank you so much uh, uh, elisa there is a couple of questions there are a couple of questions which uh, uh, i would you know quickly ask you before i request uh, uh, mr siad who has joined us from uh, uh, the department of factories and boilers government of kerala uh, uh, a very warm welcome to you siad uh thank you so much for for joining us i I'll, i'll just quickly take a couple of questions for mr larry because i know um, he would like to attend to his family immediately because they you know they they are covid positive so um uh, so there's a question from uh, uh, from atul shrivastava he asks sir we have a lot of theory and knowledge on emergency management but we fail occasionally during you know in reality in reality when you know on ground uh, what what do you think is the biggest reason for this and how do you think in a country like ours that can be averted or avoided you know the the, the accidents on the ground because we have a lot of learning we have a lot of knowledge how do we uh, is there a um, uh, some sort of uh, gap between the implementation and the learning bit uh, your opinion on this uh, larry sir so is my what is happening that uh, whatever you uh, formulate it remains on the book and uh, in real practice it is being not followed so even the whatever the training courses whatever you impart to the uh, your uh, employees and the, uh, the personnel we do not have the system of evaluation which the uh, for the foreign countries they do when they impart a training they how much intake has been happened suppose that the today course what you are doing you are giving only from one side how much is intake is happening in the other side that evaluation does not happen in abroad they do this type of things they after certifications after training or this year they say you are level 1 level 2 level 3 like that so that evaluation system is not there one thing and the holistic approach is not there and to certain extent uh, such things are uh, i will ask my friend mr sevastav you may uh, refer uh, like a few organization like shell shell international and no uh, they, they do Uh, um, they do marvelous work. What uh, what uh, lapses you pointed out? Uh, what is happening in other in general in Indian industries? But they are safety means safety. What I will just uh, share you one thing that uh, when the Kane India was the original, not the not the not in the present form. Uh, during even during the recruitment, when the personnel was recruited from the safety cadre, uh, even if he qualifies with all the degree, everything being done by HR. His final work equipment or work has to be confirmed by the uh, by the head of the H S C, where he is the final man to give the appointment. I would not need to know. So they do give honor. In normally, in, the, in two sense, in our case, uh, safety is always uh, we always act uh, act when the things happens. We do not act proactively. So if the proactive step is taken, then only it can improve. Otherwise, not. Otherwise, it will remain in the paper. SOP is there. SOP nobody has seen or not learned or or employed. It should be available to the everybody's mobile app like that. Something to be thought. Thank you, uh, Larry sir. Uh, there is one more question. Well, there there are multiple requests were uh, from from the audience who are asking for your presentation, and I am telling them. Uh, that you know we have this is a message to all who are attending this uh, online training program that we will get a version of this presentation approved by the speaker and uh, what they would uh, you can share you can share wonderful so see this is the 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 clear cut answer from larry sir that's what uh, his personality is with over 35 years of experience in this industry i think this is where you know we always want him to be a part of all our online training programs let me um you know um, tell you right here jari sir you know your presentation are always a big hit in our all attending program so thank you for agreeing to share uh, your uh, presentations 
Pankaj Kumar Kole, he also uh, compliments your, your presentation. Uh, he says that this will definitely enrich his understanding and knowledge on the subject. Uh, again, his request for your presentation and uh, Pankaj, we will be sharing this uh, with you. Uh, one last question uh, from uh, from you, from Atul Shivastav again, uh, Larry Saab. Uh, what about, you know, uh, there are no unified uh, regulations and they are very confusing at times and overlapping also. Uh, to have a, like you mentioned in your presentation also, what can we do as a country, in a country like India? To, to to push the single window service for industries. Do you think that is on the anvil? Would would that happen one day? You, know, you see, Standing Committee of Parliament in 2012, uh, they had in 12th report of Standing Committee, they told that oil and gas sector is being governed by uh, nine various regulations. And uh, so many years, yeah, they wanted a single regulation and single regulatory authority. Say either it will be either MOPNG or DGH or OSD should be one single authority. Now it is a parallel duplication uh, reporting uh, the mechanism is going on. Say you report to OSD also, you report to DGMS also, you report to PNGRB also. Whether it is an accident, whether it is a near miss, like that thing is going on. And Government of India uh, took a step in 2013, they made a petroleum rule 2013. But uh, it had, did not yet have materialized. It depends upon the secretary concerned or even if there is a pressure. But this is definitely, uh, since there is a no single regulatory, there is a no uh, single regulatory, regulation or regulatory mechanisms in country. That's why you cannot uh, catch hold of the uh, real cause of the thing or the real things. So everybody passes head to there, head to there. So this is actually need of the award and single regulation, single clearance. This is uh, people are telling. But to certain extent, so what I find that your Telangana state has done a kind of single regulation things or a single window clearance. They have a, a TI pass, they call it TI pass. Uh, they have a troop assembly, entire approval mechanisms or the regulation mechanism they have brought under that. So someone can refer that TI pass of Telangana state to get an idea and something such in the nature country should have. We do not have right now. Only right. One, one thing is. Right. Thank you so much, Larry. In fact, that 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 does answer uh, this question on a positive note. That you know, obviously there are uh, there is a standing committee which is working uh, on 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 suggestions and on advice to to have it more uh, uh, comprehensive the entire regulations and which are you know you don't have to go to pillar to post and almost different multiple departments to get the uh, you know endorsements. Uh, 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 for for running the industries, and I'm sure in times to come, this will only become smoother and 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 uh, more convenient for uh, only not only the industries but even for the authorities. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Larry Saab, for your your time, your effort. It's always a pleasure having you on our platform. And for, on behalf of uh, NIDM uh, uh, Executive Director uh, Major Bindal, uh, Mr. Anil Gupta, Dr. Anil Gupta, who's the professor and also the head of ECDRM. Uh, it's under his ages this this uh, program has been organized these three days and his team harshit uh, at nidm and all of us here at fiki uh, led by general bhardwaj he's a big fan of your presentation as well so uh, on behalf of all of us uh, thank you so much thank you, thank uh, you. And, and please take care of yourself and your family and thank let you. us know if we can be of any help thank you thank, thank you Larry, sir. right so uh, 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 moving on now we are moving on to the uh, second and the and the final presentation of the day, uh, although in the program there were uh, two presentations which were listed from uh, from the government of Kerala, but now it is kind of clubbed and, you know, we are giving you a perspective uh, from a, a state's experience, a very relevant department, uh, which even Larry Saab in his presentation did, did mention. One of the most important, uh, uh, I would say, regulators who are really working uh, tirelessly, uh, you know, at a state level in all states. The Department of Factories and Boilers, um, a very, very critical, a pivotal, uh, uh, I would say, uh, department in the entire chain when you talk about industrial safety. I think uh, the the men in charge to ensure that, that you know industries run safely across the country, uh, and you would find them in the Department of Factories and Boilers in almost all in on all the states. So uh, we have Siad uh, B Sahab from uh, who, who's from uh, who's an MTech and uh, uh, from the Occupational Safety and Health Training Institute, Department of Factories and Boilers, Government of Kerala. 
a state which has really pioneered uh, you know uh, in 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 the area of uh, disaster risk reduction overall uh, a very uh, active uh, state disaster management authority is also there in kerala and i think we have had a, a couple of uh, uh, national level training programs and siad sabud i i hope he remembers you know uh, 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 and then uh, i'm forgetting the name but the member secretary uh, kerala state disaster management authority shekhar you know we, we we happen to have good relations with him as well and kerala overall has one of the best preparedness i would say uh, they've had the most challenging times also but um, no matter what uh, i think one of the most resilient communities in the country is is in kerala and uh, uh, a lot of credit goes to uh, institutes and, and and like the occupation health and safety institute and similar institutes which are uh, conducting a lot of training and uh, imparting a lot of knowledge not only in the uh, amongst the uh, professionals but even amongst the communities in the state so um, i would uh, before i call uh, mr siyad menak uh, are you there yes 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 so uh, thank you so much siyad bhai I, I am just checking with menak menak would you uh... yeah i am there yes would you read out the uh, introduction do you have it in front of you yeah yeah sure sure Brilliant. so i would request yeah. menak for uh, calling upon Siad sir for uh, his presentation, Manak, if you could read out uh, his uh, brief profile uh, for the uh, for the audience, and, yeah. and then it will be open to him for his uh, uh, talk. Over to you, Manak. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ruba. Uh, Mr. Siad B is a BTEC uh, Chemical Engineering from University of Kerala. He is also an MTech. And uh, he's very much experienced in process safety from Cochin University of Science and Technology. He has a seven years experience at Indian Space Research uh, Organization. And he has a 17 years experience at Department of Factories and Boilers Government of Kerala. Presently, he's the additional charge of Occupational Safety and Health and Training Institute and the state coordinator from Surak Sharadham Project and Mobile Training Vehicles. And uh, he's also in the curriculum committee member in Kerala Technological University. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shiad. Over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Majinda. Sir, can you see the, my presentation, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. yes, we can. Okay. Okay, first of all, I express my gratitude to all the committee members for giving me the opportunity. Every day, multi hazard safety. While I, I heard this about uh, heard this subject two days back, and I was surprised why hazards and safety can club into a single name and single program. With that, you have added a disaster reduction. A very interesting subject, very relevant for the situation also. I will share some of the, my practical experience uh, because we are in the enforcement department for the last 17 years we are in the uh, enforcement section of uh, southern kerala and we have uh, so many experiences uh, in accidents and investigation and all those things and we are uh, we would like to share our experience with the participants for or uh, making them calmers and such such things are also happening in the uh, work workstations or like that. Anyway, the what we are expecting is most of the time we are expecting the unexpected things, uh, accidentally or incidentally, it is happening like that. All petrochemical operations. Basically, the, uh, I am uh, defining it is into the uh, into two type physical and chemical reactions. What is physical and what is chemical? That is very important. Physical, the in the sense we can see, and the chemical in the sense of reaction process. We already we have the idea uh, burning, cooking. 
roasting, etc. So many chemical reactions uh, happening in refineries, petrochemical industries of all that, or all these areas. See, this petrochemical itself is starting from medication to plastic. Considering the finished products generally safe, but raw materials are not much safe as the products. That is the main uh, problems of pet petrochemicals really. Actually, while, while uh, talking about the petrochemicals, uh, the basic properties we should be very much conversant otherwise we could not uh, understand the uh, parameters to be the, analyzing the root cause of all the it is identified that most of the incidents occur due to the lack of significance of some basic parameters we all know petrochemicals are basically whether a liquid or gaseous states concern the case of properties of flammable materials what are the properties uh, actually the prop, uh, while we are considering the basic properties vapor pressure flash point limits of flammability vapor density and ignition energy etc etc so many parameters we all know but what is the significance of all these parameters is very important generally speaking by considering by analyzing the root causes it is understood that the the a linking between the significance with these parameters is missing that that is the root cause of these uh, most of these incidents from the root cause analysis it is found that the uh, the if i, I am uh, suppose i will ask you some uh, uh, each and everyone that if there is no relationship between these parameters i have told some two three four parameters vapor pressure flash point limits of flammability vapor density etc etc and do you think about any relation with any of these two items some vapor pressure with uh, ignition energy or vapor pressure with uh, static energy in electricity or flash point with limit of flammability or flash points with vapor density any relations are there all may know the levels of parameters of what very clearly what is the vapor pressure what is the flash point of such uh, chemicals and what is the limits of flammability but in practical experience we should have some hidden links between this all that thing you have to identify and we have to uh, implement in the workplace otherwise we will be in trouble most of the accidents happen general root causes we are saying and we analyzing identifying the hidden hazards in such situations we should be very much careful what is happening there in some cases the some hidden hazards like static energy uh, rollover phenomena and boil over etc etc so many hidden hazards are there we should be very much uh, specifically saying that these phenomena these hazards we should be very much find the root of uh, emerging situations you have to consider also see i am telling you i, I am going to an accident Barton fire accident, all, everybody knows that this is the uh, situation. This is a petrochemical fire. The solvent fire happened in Barton Solvents uh, Depot. But what is the root cause of this accident? That is very interesting. Suppose one vehicle is coming to coming for unloading uh, the petrochemical compound. 
to uh, to uh, their storage facility what are the things we are doing we are doing the earthing we are doing properly to uh, dissipate the static energy earthing all these things we are uh, connected properly and we started unloading but what happened to this actually what happened this is the real root cause due to the static energy initiated the ignition energy for this accident this is a simple thing they have forgotten or they have no, they have they don't have the idea i will explain each and everything of this accident okay they have connected all these things properly this is the tanker naphtha is unloading transporting the liquid was bonded it was connected together with electrical conductors and grounded inside the 15000 gallon storage tank there was a device for measuring the liquid level a metal tape which was grounded was suspended from pulleys and connected to a metal float by a loose flexible linkage assembly this linkage presented a hidden danger during the filling of the tank the solvent was pumped from three tanker trailer compartments into the tank as the hose was switched from one compartment to another air entered the line creating bubbles and turbulence inside the tank a static electrical charge built up in the non-conductive liquid meanwhile the space above the liquid was filled with an explosive mixture of vapor and air the swirling turbulent liquid caused the float to drift and rock creating slack in the metal tape this allowed a gap to form intermittently in the linkage assembly interrupting the grounding of the float the metal float accumulated a static electrical charge about 9 a.m. a spark from static electricity ignited the vapor air mixture causing a massive explosion the blast sent the storage tank rocketing into the air two more tanks quickly ruptured and released their contents into the rapidly expanding fire as the fire raged inside the tank farm other tanks burst and ignited launching heavy steel tank lids 10 to 12 feet in diameter into the air 20000 gallons of flammable liquid were released into the spill containment area valves pipes and other heavy steel objects were hurled off-site and into the adjoining community one tank lid struck a mobile home about 300 feet away a pressure valve hit a neighboring business 400 feet away can you see the my presentation yes yes see the video yes video okay thank you what you have seen is a very interesting thing we all know uh, the different types of storages are there floating roof fixed roof like that this is a fixed roof storage naphtha is storing and there is a uh, measuring device connected to the uh, inside the tank for knowing the level of the uh liquid level but what happened is they have uh, the tanker was uh, earthed properly and the pipelines are they are earthed properly but what happened there is uh, three tanks are there in the wagon and they are intermittently changing the uh, connected hoses one by one three tanks are there uh, they are connected uh, one they have connected first and they have removed it and connected it to the second line and after that the third tank they are connected to the third line while connecting the connecting lines they are the 
what are uh, the, uh, there are the chance of formation of air bubbles inside the tank and what happens there is that the the a float was there and by the simultaneously the vapor space vapor space this is a low volatile uh, chemical compared to other gasoline or petrol this is a low volatile chemical low volatile means the flammable limit is very important uh, that is why I'm uh, at the starting of my presentation. I have told the parameters, the significance of the parameters. We definitely have an idea. What is the significance of flammable limit and flash point, and the case of ignition energy? These three things: flash points, limits of flammability, and ignition energy. These three. We uh, closely looking into it. What is the flash point? Flash point is the lower, lowest temperature of the flammable liquid can generate enough vapor to form mixer with air. The air fuel mixer should be in a definite concentration. Suppose uh, most of the petrochemical fuels will, uh, the flammable range will be 1.5 to 9, a range of 1.5 to 6. That means the um, 1.5 percentage of fuel vapor is only required for a initiation of a fire. That is very important point. Very small leaks initiates the starting of fire, not very large air fuel uh, fuel mixer. That is uh, that is the point. We exactly we should have a very clear idea about that. That is one point. The other thing, the ignition, the uh, the ignition energy, the requirement of ignition energy. That is also very important. For petrochemicals, uh, some 0.2 millijoules is required approximately for the initiation of a fire. That also very very interesting thing. Uh, the correct fire initiation starts in between the lower uh, ignition, lower flammable limit and the upper flammable limit. I will uh, in in coming slides I will explain in detail. Just we have an idea, and I I will uh, tell you in detail uh, that thing also. What is happened here? The ignition energy initiated from the float. That is very important, very interesting thing. All the other parts we have uh, grounded properly to dissipate the static energy. But the float, while changing the the connecting hoses from one uh, knob to other, there there is some. Uh, accumulation of static energy was there and uh, uh, there is no way to the, the, we all know the petrochemicals are non-conductive and the chances uh, was the chance was there for accumulating the same time the air fuel mixture generation suitable uh, for the uh, initiation of fire this is the case the float was not grounded properly. The, the uh, uh, initiation of the accumulation of uh, static energy uh, was only due to the uh, movement of this. So, up from tanker trailer compartments into the tank. The hose was switched from one. Yes, well, the hose is switched to one to other. There is the, the uh, bubbles formed there, and that is a hidden danger. Solvent was pumped from three tanker trailer compartments into the tank. The hose was switched from one compartment to another. Air and lime creating bubbles and turbulence inside the tank. Static electrical charge built up in the non conductive liquid. While the space above the liquid was filled with an explosive mixture of vapor and air. The swirling turbulent liquid 
caused the float to drift and rock, creating slack in the metal tape. This allowed a gap to form intermittently in the linkage assembly, interrupting the grounding of the float. The metal float accumulated a static electrical charge. About 9 a.m., a spark from static electricity ignited the vapor-air mixture. I think you have understand the real root cause of this incident. This is what is what I will mention that the vapor pressure, flash point, limits of vapor density, these all things are very much important and everybody has the uh, aware of all these things. What is the flash point, what is the vapor pressure and limits of flammability, everybody knows that. But what is the, uh, the present problem is that, what is the significance, that is very important. Main raw materials and products are liquid and gaseous components which are almost toxic and flammable and corrosive. And the production process often involves high temperature and pressure and lower temperature and pressure and the other complex technical operations, which are the reactions are complex and strong and continuity. Due to material transpiration, spilling accidents, ignition reaction, uh, uh, accident reaction, reaction conditions out of control, uh, mal operation and other reasons during oil and chemical process in the production, it is possible to occur high risk of fire and explosion accidents, which often accompanied with fire after the explosion, recurrences and three-dimensional large area, multi-point and other forms of combustion that could easily lead to heavy casualties and property loss and environmental damage. Again, I came to the, the basic slides. Everybody knows the vapor pressure. Okay, vapor pressure, everybody knows that that's a measure of how fast the liquid evaporates. This is a very, a very important point. Highly volatile um, uh, petrochemicals are there and less volatile petrochemicals are also there. This is the, this NAFTA is less volatile petrochemicals. Parameters we are analyzing means this is, we should be taken into the category of less volatile petrochemical product. Because with the, all the things do not match with other chemicals, other uh, highly volatile chemicals, it, this is not applicable. Then the flash point is the lowest temperature that I'll everybody know that a flammable uh, mixer can generate enough vapor to a mixer and with, with air and that will ignite. Okay, these are the points and the flash points everybody knows. Some of the flash points I am just seeing all the most of the uh, flash points are below zero degrees and we can see the negative mark. That means the flash point, the importance of flash point. Then this is the, uh, here comes the other point, flammable limit. That means lower flammable limit of NAFTA is 1.2 and the upper flammable limit is 6.9. This is less volatile chemicals means the formation of air fuel mixer. There is so many chance for the uh, sufficient uh, air fuel mixer uh, ratio is uh, available in the vapor space of the fixed roof uh, storage. You can see the lower low, um, lower flame uh, lower uh, ratio is 1.2 percent, and the upper ratio is upper flammable limit is 6.9. In the uh, case of gasoline, a highly volatile liquids. The, it is 1.4 and 7.6 lower flammable limit and upper flammable limit. In the case of uh, petroleum products or petrol uh, gasoline, what is happening means it is a highly volatile liquids. That means uh, most of the time the fuel uh, in, in the vapor space will be above upper flammable limit and there will not be any chance for a fire, initiation of a fire. That is the difference between this uh, NAFTA and the gasoline. NAFTA is a low volatile uh, liquid. The, the volatility will be slowly and the chance is there for accumulating air fuel mixer in the lower rates. But in the case of gasoline, it, uh, it is not like that. That you have to understand. This is the, you should not uh, take an in account NAFTA and the gasoline in the same way. NAFTA is uh, low volatile liquid means it will be yeah, we should be we should handle it very carefully. Otherwise, this type of accident can happen. LNG and other things. I will come into it. Uh, one one more thing: the initiation 
in ignition energy is also very important ignition energy what this ignition energy has the some relation with this is flash point and limit, uh, the limits of flammability lowest amount of energy required for the ignition is that is the ignition energy the uh, one more thing i i want this is the uh what is the uh, the uh, composition versus energy spark energy or ignition energy this is a graph from the graph we can so we can see lower flammable limit maximum energy is required maximum energy is required for a fire in the lower flammable limit similarly in the upper flammable limit also maximum spark energy is required for a fire for the initiation of a fire this is a very important point this is a practical uh, aspect it is very important because initiation of a fire mainly in between lower flammable limit and upper flammable limit as per the stoichiometric calculation the, we can see around the center we can see here only small ignition energy required this point is very important accident fires and all things happen in this area because lean too lean area more energy is required too rich area more energy is required but in between a point that point requires only significant amount of spark energy or ignition energy energy that means around 0.2 milli joule is required that is a very important point this is the point uh, uh, two points we have noted low less volatile liquids can create flammable mixer in the vapor space and the second thing in between the uh, lower flammable level and upper flammable limit a point is there minimum energy is required for a initiation of fire everybody clear okay these are the normal ignition energy carbon disulfide 0 0.009 and like that 0 0.14 0 0.22 most of the um, petrochemicals will come around 0.2 millijoule level okay i think for a discharge of ignite and exposed explosive atmosphere there must be an enough energy the minimum ignition energy of most hydrocarbon gives a vapor range of 0.1 to 1 millijoule the level of methane is 0.29 millijoule for example uh, a person walking across a carpeted floor can develop a potential difference large enough for a 40 millijoule discharge more energy than it takes to ignite methane only thing the sufficient air fuel mixture should be available then even walking in the carpet floor itself will be a hazard this is a these are the hidden hazards we are uh, regularly seeing what is the is there any leak of hydrocarbon the sensor is working or like that are we are uh, checking but minor leaks can initiate major fires this is very important very interesting also Humans generally only sense discharge of 0.6 millijoule or more, which means the discharge we can't detect may carry enough energy to ignite a flammable mixture. Identifying the ignition sources. One fuel and oxygen at present, an ignition source is needed to complete the fire triangle. Hydrocarbons can be ignited in two ways. The external ignition source with sufficient energy to ignite the fuel oxygen mixture is available, or flames or spark, etc., is required. Otherwise, the auto ignition temperature, everybody knows that when the temperature is raised about the auto ignition temperature, the compression ignition of a diesel engine, etc., can create uh, or uh, a fire, initiate a fire. These are the two uh, ignition sources we are identified. And the badges for ignition energy what energy is required to ignite a uh, fuel mixture? That is very important. And the available uh, available to ignite the fuel mixture, what factors can increase or decrease the energy level of an ignition source? I think you have a clear idea about this thing. 
uh, the charge of separation. Everybody knows about the static energy and all those things. I am not uh, explaining in detail. And uh, for avoiding such accidents, uh, some purge storage tanks with an inert gas or remove the oxygen and uh, add antistatic agents to liquids or pump liquids more slowly. Uh, and very verify the storage tank and level floats are effectively bonds. The float itself should be connected with the uh, the floating line. Then the if any uh, amount of uh, this uh, static energy accumulated means it will dis dissipate it properly through the um, floating arrangement. Uh, in most of the situation, the lower explosive limit is the main concern. Vapor from flammable liquids can be found in the workplace, but are often uh, too diluted uh, to catch the power. However, these vapors can be. Vapor density is a measure of how heavy a vapor is compared to air. These are this, uh, the properties. Everybody very much familiar with all these things. And I am now I am skipping this thing. And the next, uh, this is the one case study I want to uh, present in you. And the next one is the rollover phenomena. That is happened uh, mostly in the uh, uh, cryogenic uh, liquid storage like LNG. What is rollover? Rollover refers to the rapid release of LNG vapors from a storage tank caused by stratification. The potential for rollover arises when two separated layers of different densities due to different LNG compositions exist in the storage tank. How the different LNG compositions come in a storage tank? That is very important. The, uh, the LNG storage tank, there is a chance to form nitrogen uh, traces and uh, some other water uh, particle chances of some water uh, particles are, the moisture particles are there. Uh, what happened there? We can see during the weathering process, the composition of LNG changes because of the small amount of nitrogen present is much more volatile than methane. How much more volatile nitrogen is present at the cryogenic temperature, around minus 167, 169 like the temperature and the behavior of hydrocarbon effectively non-volatile at storage condition. Because hydrocarbons are in the, keeping in the uh, minus temperature, keeping in the container, LNG container itself. Natural conversion causes circulation of LNG within the storage tank maintain a uniform liquid composition. The addition of no liquid, however, can result in the formation of a strata of highly different temperature and density within the LNG storage tank. How this uh, density difference happens, that is very important. All the density, uh, as the densities of two layers approach in the other, two layers of mix rapidly, and the lower layer which has been superheated use of large amounts of vapor as it of the surface of the tank. This phenomena is known as rollover. The large amount of vapor generated by this phenomena can cause a dramatic vapor expansion and increase in internal tank pressure. That is a hazardous situation. That is the thing I want to explain in the, the boil of lighter layer gets denser and denser layer gets lighter and it will create problems inside the uh, stratification phenomena in the LNG tank. Recently, we have seen the after the lockdown, the first incident started the May 7, 2020. LG gas leak, everybody knows that. The siren gas released, uh, the siren gas released into the atmosphere and uh, it is spread into the uh, uh, open area and people breathe and there were uh, uh, I, uh, so many people that died uh, like that the incidents happen but this normally the stratification and rollover can, uh, can be considered only in the uh, this type of cryogenic type of uh, storage like that the LNG gaseous fuels but in the case this is the something happened in this also in the styrene storage tank this is the this is a fixed roof tank uh, styrene storage stored in the this tank i am taking the uh, that part only 
not uh, major uh, details i am not telling here some due to the weathering conditions the temperature in the top layer uh, will be increased and there is a refrigerated styrene return wall was there styrene uh, was taken out and uh, the it is refrigerated and it will be uh, returned to the top of the tank but they have made a modification the from the mixer you can uh, see that the styrene return wall in the top of the float top of the float that means the cooled styrene will be pumped into the top of top surface of the uh, tank why this uh, thing is doing means there will be uh, the due to the weather conditions the temperature will increase in the top of the uh, roof area and that uh, density difference will occur and in order to avoid such situations if, if some density uh, some inhibitors they are uh, adding for preventing the polymerization auto polymerization like that effect for preventing they are mixing with the cold styrene liquid in the top of the surface this is a routine process they are continuing this process but what happened means the around two three months back they have changed the design they have made a dip leg arrangement that means the purpose did not survive actually the purpose is for uh, stabilizing the styrene liquid in the tank due to some their uh, convenience they have changed the uh, the pipe connected to the roof and the floor was changed to that uh, deep leg arrangement they have changed but what is the thing uh, what happened means the top portion again in the high temperature area that means the inhibitors adding uh, inhibitors added to added for keeping the to preventing the auto polymerization uh, consumption of for this chemical is uh, more and the chance for uh, for an accident for accident release also occur the due to the uh, temperature difference this is this was the root cause of the lg accident everybody um, so many uh, studies are there but the real fact is that they have changed the float arrangement uh, the refrigeration uh, styrene return line changed to deep leg arrangements that means the purpose not survived and the uh, alternate prepping provides the cold styrene mode number to be delivered to the bottom of the tank the modified system of the tank is carried out uh, december 2019 and confirmed by the company management in its statement this is the real root cause of that incident such situation before doing such situations and definitely hazard study hazard acid etc risk analysis should be done without done, doing all these things uh, this type of actions can be happen simply these are the practical experience we can feel actually a modification equipments or plan should be in the hassle and the uh, risk assessment study originally the having a swing pipe arrangement to discharge the cooling still cold cold uh, styrene from the recirculation and refrigeration unit below the liquid surface thus the cold liquid was delivered at the top of the tank and by the chemical property it is slowly circulated to the bottom of the tank from where it would be pumped through the refrigeration unit thus the contents of the tank were well mixed by the chemical properties as the denser cold styrene moves down towards the bottom by gravity and natural conversion such that the temperature would be less thermally stratified in the tank this rollover phenomena can be applicable to most of the highly volatile chemicals also
then the the one uh, the other thing one more thing i want to uh, explain is the boiler phenomena that is when firefighting is of semi enclosed oil or petrochemical fuel using water a secondary hazard is even called out boil boil over may occur that is extremely dangerous some of the uh, will sink into the bottom of the tank or other vessel due to the density differences which will result in the formation of water layer the heat from the fuel will ultimately boil the water creating steam the rapidly expanding steam expels the fuel upwards the boil over and out of the container discharging the still ignited fuel onto the large and uncontrolled area outside the container the best way to prevent the phenomena is to open the valve at the bottom of the tank to drain the water this is a, a more accidents a possibility for accidents happening in while firefighting this is uh, this very simple a common household example of this phenomena can occur when water is used to put out burning pan of cooking oil most of the uh, this fire incidents the uh, fire uh, water is pumped into the uh, incident spot that is the major thing and everybody knows the iuc jaipur incident motor speed got over filled this is the next one in a tank gushed out and ignited a product leaked around for 75 minutes 1000 tons of um, uh, ms then fire spread in of that 11 tanks and it continued till the fuel contents were totally burned out hydrocarbon uh, fires are like that we it is very hardly difficult to uh, put up the fire and when the material will be finished the fire will automatically put off and 6000 uh, 60000 tail product burned out in 11 days 11 fatalities many injured and to it to it a course of loss this type of incidents are happening in uh, many places also vapor cloud which ignited explosion damage nearby homes and businesses and tank level indication was not functioning correctly warning alarms were not ignored no provision for shut off or supply automatically no remote operation or relay well based on this mbl committee report passed a very stringent uh, modifications to the existing plans and the coming plans the structures are uh, all uh, based on that now the plans are uh, working like that as per the recommendations of the mbl this is another incident we can the very interesting one we can see this is a uh, case of an lpg accident from the figure itself everything everything self explanatory some eight students some eight people are sitting in a cafeteria and uh, taking their food this is the cctv camera footage you can see in the round red round one fellow is standing there what what he is doing this is a very important thing how a fire can initiate what is the time 16 10 2015 1 11 uh, 13 29 and 35 seconds 35th second they are all alive and 13 29 36th second all become to ashes that is the real story you can see the video the people are sitting and taking their food this happened in Bombay, Kurla, in 2015. This is the final year students of engineering college from Don Bosco Engineering College. You can see everybody is enjoying the food. Hotel boy is approaching with a glass of water to one table and after serving he is standing nearby this uh, blue check shafted person told them that there is a smell of some gases immediately hearing this he is going to switch on the fan well after switch on the fan the cctv was exploded and the cylinder just 
This is the back side of the portal. Everybody is approaching. The back side is fire. Uh, you can see. There are three gas cylinders are there. This is the second cylinder explosion. This is a blevy. This is a third cylinder explosion. This is, this is the accident. What we have what we have understand from this accident. This is the uh, what lower flammable limit is the culprit for this also. Around two percentage of LPG spreading in the cafeteria. That means it's a. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a source for, uh, for if any uh, source of ignition, ignition energy is required for a fire and where from where here they have got the initiation, ignition energy, the while well, switching the fun, the air fuel mixture in the correct level. From this, the gaseous uh, gas leak also, we will be very much vigilant about the small these are the these students have gotten into charge actually what we have to end if, uh, understand that the lower flammable limit is very important and in between lower flammable limit and upper flammable limit there is a point a minimum ignition energy is required and that chance is vulnerable and uh, uh, any chance for any type of uh, ignition energy can uh, deliver a major accident and the eight people were uh, killed in the blast this is the fan he is switched on anyway this is a, this is an, uh, another thing these are the uh, case studies i wish to present in front of you and uh, there are so many other things other reasons also for this but I think uh, anybody, uh, each, each of you have some doubts regarding these things, and I, I will uh, correct. I, I will clarify it uh, to my extent. I think if any doubt regarding these case studies, please ask me. I am ready to share the presentation to you, no problem. Yes, Mr. Sial, I think you can continue, but we'll uh, take the questions uh, uh, towards the end of the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Based on the fire risk prediction analysis, according to the layer of protection, the dangers in the plan, the multi-object and multi-state emergency management system was bought forth among, uh, among the different stages of routine operations. Potential fire accidents, monitoring and elimination, fire accidents prediction and pre-warning, early disposal and emergency response. These are uh, the basic requirement for uh, multi-hazard safety in is using the advanced information and technologies, the uh, geographic uh, information system, remote sensing and telemetry system. We are in Kerala, we are uh, in the uh, start town of remote sensing uh, in collaboration with the uh, uh, ISRO and it is in process and we will commission it within a year uh, regarding the uh, this type of uh, any type of uh, leakage from industry can easily identify with the use of sensor and analyze the uh, uh, vulnerability and the risk based on this and it will be their risk will be informed to the uh, nearby residents or nearby uh, communities. Uh, 
like that we are already planned and uh, uh, our uh, st remote sensing station and all those things are uh, planned in our in our Naulam office and it is in the in work um, in the uh, not in the operation stage it is in the concession under concession stage and within i think one or two months it will be in operational and integrating the different functions of risk assessment monitoring and supervising forecast and early warning and decision making and comprehensive coordination emergency response optimized decision making and so on the emergency management system can help the petrochemical enterprise to realize dynamic security and uh, fire risk alignments, thereby enhancing the fire safety management of the petrochemical companies and fire prevention technology. Real-time monitoring and productive maintenance of prevent the incident failure on non-productive time. Conditions based on the monitoring. Placement of sensors to measure within these conditions, temperature, vibration to detect situations that may indicate the potential equipment failure. The more sophisticated system have alerting capabilities and are integrated with enterprises asset management applications that can automatically generate inspection of work orders. And predictive maintenance goes beyond the condition based on maintenance in applying advanced analytics to predict potential equipment failures, providing enough time to, for, to procure complex non commodity and replacement equipment. The algorithms identify the departure form normal of operating levels a piece of equipment rather than comparing performance with expected performance levels of the equipment cases and critically based maintenance the technique informs decisions on maintenance strategy by identifying with assets are critical to the process and the process impacts could be if the asset there to fail critically based uh, maintenance also informs procurement strategy so that inventors inventories and the costs associated with the keeping them are reduced, but not at the expense of the increased downtime. Performance center to center of excellence. The most advanced companies have had the centers of excellence where engineering staff are able to bring together engineering knowledge for root cause analysis when potential problems are identified. Centers of, centers of excellence can also have the view of multiple assets to support the decision making and maintenance planning and even suggest future equipment design modification. Only this much I have to say. I am concluding this session. Thank you for, uh, thank you very much for, once again, I thank you for, uh, thanking for uh, giving me the opportunity and uh, also thanking for the, your patient listening also. Your questions will be answered, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Siad. Thank you, sir. for sharing your perspective on some very important subjects and uh, areas of industrial safety i think uh, from a uh, you know from an enforcement agency or a regulator perspective you really uh, touched upon some very very important uh, points which uh, which usually uh, you know a part of the industry one may assume or one may think that they know but you know you have refreshed a lot of uh, important areas in, I'm sure the practitioners and the professionals who are uh, who have joined us from all over the country, there are about 300 here on this uh, platform and about 300 plus almost 400 on the YouTube channel. So I think uh, 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 this platform, because of the quality of presentations we've had, uh, you know, all throughout our OTPs, especially, you know, talking about today, we had someone from the industry, Mr. Joy Deep Lehri, who spoke uh, of uh, the industry perspective of dealing with incidents, how they are prepared, how they prepare themselves, and you giving from an enforcement agency point of view, from a regulator perspective, the the insights which you which you shared uh, with some very relevant uh, visuals, uh, videos, and and of course uh, uh, literature. I think uh, uh, I must thank you for for uh, taking out time in in these difficult. Uh, uh, you know, and, and crisis times for, uh, uh, you know, uh, for sharing your experience, your years of experience, or over two decades of experience with our, with our, uh, with our professionals, uh, industry professionals, government, uh, 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 you know, department officials from different parts of the country, people from civil society uh, organizations have also joined us and so, so have, uh, young budding uh, professionals from from the academia i think uh, uh, 
we would request you, you know, to, you know, we would share, um, you know, uh, keep sharing our, our schedule with you. And I think it would be great to have your perspective uh, to be shared with more such professionals in, in, in future programs. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Syed, for your contribution to towards making today's uh, proceeding successful. I think uh, two amazing and very uh, pertinent presentations been made uh, over the past uh, two hours, over two hours. I think uh, if there are questions, I would uh, quickly see because uh, I know we, we, you know, usually we skid, uh, and we, you know, we, we, we take questions and we go on for a longer time, but considering the, the situation, which is out there, I think we would not hold, uh, uh, neither you nor the participants for long. Um, there is, uh, uh, one question, uh, and, there are, you know, plenty of compliments, which are coming in from, from the participant. They are really excited to have your presentation and you mentioned during your talk that, you know. We can share your, uh, uh, your 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 slides with with the the participants who would be issued a certificate at the end of the three days, uh, a, a certificate which is issued jointly by NIDM and FICI's CIDM board. Um, one important uh, uh, one question which comes from Suraj Patil, uh, uh, Mr. Siyar, yes. hydro, you mentioned the hydrocarbons ignited in two ways. And he, he says, how, how, how is that? And if you could share more, uh, light one is due to the, one is due to the energy that I have got the ignition energy. The other is due to the fire, the auto ignition temperature, mm -hmm. that auto ignition temperature and flash point two temperature. You have to identify that is the, we go through the significance of what is the flash point? What is the auto ignition temperature? Maybe the flash point is around minus temperature. Yeah. And the auto ignition temperature is around some 150, like that above 150 degree temperature. How this mm -hmm. auto ignition temperature works means without the support of any of the ignition, that temperature itself acts as an energy. That is the major difference. Energy required for a minimum, that is the minimum ignition energy that is in the uh, angle of energy itself. The other one is the temperature variant. That is the major difference. Okay. All right. Uh, one, uh, one question, which, which, you know, which keeps coming up and I would like to sort of uh, phrase it in the best possible manner to you. Uh, uh, said what happened in Vizag on the 7th of May last okay. year. Ah, oh. uh, one, I would like to, uh, have your uh, uh, insights and your 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 opinion on your reaction to that. Also, along with it, uh, where do you think the industry? And, and in this case, it was a, a, a multinational. You know, it was an LG Chem plant. Where do you think the lacunas are? Where do you think the shortcomings are? Why such incidents are even? you know, being witnessed in, in, in multinational setups and facilities. I would please share your thoughts. No, that I have, and from the starting of the, my presentation, I have told, everybody knows the basic parameters. Hmm. What is the significance in this scenario is very important. Hmm. Everybody knows what is the autopolymerization is, uh, is um, uh, doing there. Absolutely. Yeah. But what is the other conditions? The temperature uh, rising or temperature varying uh, like that, that parameters, they are not looking into it. They are all standard operating procedures. They have, they have not in, in our material safety data sheet itself. It is not correct, actually. They are not specifically said the highly volatile liquids and low volatile liquids. Mm. In both cases been different. We, we, we should take the different strategy for the statutory purpose. We are keeping the material safety data sheets, but anybody is uh, reading the safety data sheet. Even the safety data sheet itself is uh, giving us the false information. Actually, they are not there for the law point of view. They are giving the material safety data sheet. You can go through the Barton fire incident. The uh, CSB report, you just go through it. I have taken these things from the CSB report and the button fire. In that, that clearly they specifically say that this 
uh, lack of missing links between uh, these things are the major culprit for uh, creating such situations, such, such accidents. That is the major thing. This is the, the point I have mentioned in the LG gas is only one part. So many other uh, conditions contribute so many other things also. I have a detailed study report in the of LG yeah. Yes. In, uh, and one of, the, one, of the, one of the points which were highlighted as part of yes. the investigation uh, which happened on, on this, which was led by the chief secretary. Yes, yes, yes. One yes, of the points yes, which yes. came out, uh, one of the things which, were, uh, which was also part of the, uh, the investigation final report, was that the safety staff of that facility was contractual. Yeah, and most of the case it is like that in the IOC Jaipur issue is also like that. Meena and uh, the other yes. person, we That's all right. knows that basic, basic yeah. situation is our attitude. Sir, but then from an envo enforcement point of view, yeah. how easy and difficult, how easy or difficult it is, uh, you know, from a regulator like... like a, a we can monitor the supervisor. We could not monitor the... There is no rule for monitoring the worker level or worker qualification like that. In the uh, statute, it is uh, the qualification there and the experience they are mentioning for the supervisors. But the worker yeah. level, there yes. is no... Uh, so, I think without, without uh, uh, you know, uh, so they, they found a loophole somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, they just try and exploit that loophole. And I think, so the systems were not... No, there is not the accountability, thing. basically. Not accountability means uh, the supervisor has not accountability. He is saying that the sure. contract worker, the... Uh, migrate levels have done this. They are exactly. washing their hands, but the crores they are losing and crores who are losing to the uh, nation is very important. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And that I is, think it's time. It's time that at least that our attitude, attitude means yeah. the, what the person is doing uh, the, all this work and this rising means you should definitely have the accountability and also he have the uh, uh, culture. The safety culture, Absolutely. that is, uh, that is, the, that is the, all things will leading to that point. I think this is something what has been done very effectively in all uh, big corporates and big PSUs. Yes. You know, uh, the subject or the issue of safety is, is discussed almost on a daily basis. I think in organizations and facilities where this is, this subject is ignored, is only more vulnerable to such accidents. Yes, yes. So if it is the mainstream discussion point, I think that is when only you can you can avoid such incidents to happen. And or even if such incidents happen because of any error, you yeah. are better prepared to deal with them. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, the big companies, the big corporates are setting an example. But I think uh, this is inexcusable what happened in LG Chem, not the accident per se, but not being prepared to deal with an accident is also you know. And if you had the capacity to, 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 to be prepared, but you didn't, that's that's ignorance. And, and I think that should not go unnoticed. And I think the report said it very clearly. Yeah. So uh, I think, sir, uh, we've, we've taken a lot of your time. Thank you so much. No problem, sir. I'll be very free to uh, deliver what I know. I can <laughs> thank. Very, 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 okay. very useful. Okay. Very useful very informative, yeah. the presentation, the videos which you showed, and with the simplicity with which you showed and you know explained, I think a lot of credit goes. That's why I, I before you started your presentation, I always have very high regards for all officials from Kerala specifically. Thank you. you know, they, 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 it's a lot, they, they, you know, you can you can see the, uh, the, the detailing which goes in, 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 in whatever, uh, from a disaster management perspective, what, what Kerala does. So be it its authority on disaster management, be it the Department of Factories and Boilers, the Pollution Control Board. I think I've, we've, we've had a very, very pleasant experience of working with your all uh, departments. And yes. it's always very encouraging. And I think we, we state your example to other uh, provinces and other states also. Yeah, think, actually, actually, uh, well, good thanks to our director, Mr. Pramod. He is doing all this thing. Yeah. We are motivating all of us, actually. Oh, no, no, he's a brilliant guy. We worked <laughs> yeah, with yeah. him in 2016, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yes, 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 uh, 2016. Yes. And I think he was, now he's been promoted to the director. So I think yeah. a yeah. very uh, suitable person for that post. For and the industry, convey, for the industry. Definitely. Industry. Yeah, please, yeah. For the please convey our regards to okay. him, personal uh -huh. regards from my side and from the CIDM board and okay. to all your colleagues. 
who are doing a great job in your department and you know also for sharing such important information through your presentation today thank you to you and uh, to to your entire team thank you so much uh, uh, siabji for uh, uh, joining us today i think on that note uh, uh, akhil and manak i think we can uh, close for the day yes and uh, we have uh, almost 300 participants still who are hooked on with us i think uh, many uh, uh, you know thanks to them also for for uh, i hope you know their time is 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 worth every 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 you know every information which we are sharing with them and i think uh, uh, tomorrow which is the final day we have some uh, very important presentations uh, on the third day by pranab ghosh who is the head of hsc asset integrity and sustainability at adani uh, total gas limited so he would be sharing some very very critical uh, experience and uh, knowledge uh, the the very uh, popular and uh, uh, experienced mr n bose babu who's the ceo of gspl india transco limited right? and and uh, uh, our dear friend and uh, very knowledgeable uh, rishikesh mahadev technical advisor from uh, the german cooperation group he would share the international perspective uh, from from uh, from germany which is uh, uh, known to be the most industrialized and most advanced country when it comes to industrial development. He would be sharing his experience, GIZ's experience of working in India. I think we have a very, very, very impressive lineup like we had today for tomorrow as well. So, and uh, which would be followed by a, a small valedictory section session with, with Dr. Anil Gupta who would come back. Uh, and, uh, uh, and also we would request Dr. Muzaffar Ahmad, if possible, former member National Disaster Management Authority and uh, uh, a, a member of our CIDM board to also, um, you know, come and share his thoughts on, on this OTP. So on that note, uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, use the same email ID like you've done yesterday and today, uh, even tomorrow, so that it, it makes it easier for us to 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 keep a tap on your on your attendance. And uh, as you know, you have to be uh, present on all three days to be eligible uh, for the certificate, which would be issued. Uh, uh, post this OTP is over. Uh, please bear with us because of uh, limited resources uh, due to due to COVID uh, and and uh, you know uh, a lot of other challenges. Uh, issuing of uh, you know uh, the presentations and uh, and certificate might take a little longer than than, than normal, but uh, be rest assured we would definitely share it uh, in two to three weeks time. Uh, uh, you know by mid mid May it should be with you. Uh, anything, anything, uh, Akhil you, or Menak, you would like to share for today? Uh, no, I think you've covered it all. But, but uh, I just want to say that uh, they have to, the, our participants have to uh, use the same email ID as you've already mentioned, and you've also mentioned about the certificate. So that is all uh, from my side. Brilliant. So thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all the participants. Uh, amazing. We have 300 uh, still with us. Please uh, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, stay at home. Uh, for the sake of not only yourself, but your friends, families, and loved ones. I think this is the most important thing today. Uh, we can we can contribute, you know, we need to contribute to our nation's strength of dealing with this crisis. And the best way you can do it is by staying at home and not uh, uh, wandering out unnecessarily. I think that uh, uh, don't panic, don't worry. It's, it's not as bad as some of the WhatsApp forwards or uh, rumors say it is, but yes, it is. It is at the same time very dangerous. So, uh, but if we take proper precautions, if we follow the protocol, uh, I do. I, I think we can. We can defeat this, like we've defeated any other crisis in 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 earlier times. Uh, you take the history. This is a good time to also read, uh, you know, positive things. Uh, listen to news, but. Uh, don't listen to only news. Also, listen to some uh, and read some positive feedback, which 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 is also there, hidden somewhere. Uh, most of the negative things they they get propagated much more than than positive ones. But uh, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, you know everything is lost. The situation is grim, but uh, we, we are sure that we together can we can make a difference. No one alone can can really defeat this. We have to. Join hands, come together, but join hand only virtually sitting at home and not physically. 
So on that note, thank you so much. And until tomorrow, uh, 2 o'clock, bye-bye uh, from all of us here at Fiki. And